Hey, good morning. This is David. I appreciate you joining me today. If we can help you with any HVAC skills training needs, check us out on HVACRSkills.com. We'd love to have um, some of your team come to see us at our live training lab in Garner, North Carolina. And of course, we can always hit the road to set up a training event for your team uh, wherever you may be. So give us a call or check us out on HVACRSkills.com. Today I want to talk about power checking run capacitors. This is uh, an old school method that we used to do before there were the digital capacitor testers out there. Uh, we are leaving this capacitor in a live circuit, operating the system, and using voltage and current measurements and a little bit of math to get an accurate reading of the microfarads of this capacitor under load. So the way we've got our instruments set up, this particular um, uh, meter will give me a simultaneous amps and volts display. So I've got my voltmeter leads set up uh, directly across the capacitor itself. Remember, all the existing unit wiring stays intact, and I'm just making a voltage measurement across the capacitor during operation. This is going to see the back EMF generated from the motor start winding and it will be higher than the applied voltage to the machine um, which is why the capacitors in our business have to be rated at either 370 or 440 VAC. There's, there's quite a bit of voltage coming back to those. Um, we also are measuring the current around one of these two wires being a standard run capacitor with only two terminals, either one of those wires would work in this case to determine the microfarads of this blower motor capacitor. So let's get this cranked up and I'll show you the rest of the game plan here. So this is a furnace blower motor. It is plugged into a standard 120 volt outlet uh, here at the lab. So we've got 120 volts supplied, and now let's take a look at the readings that we have. So we've got 0.65 amps and about 230 volts. 0.65 amps, 230 volts. Now the formula that we're going to use, and then I'll shut this back down so it's a little easier to hear. The formula that we're going to use for this is microfarads equals amps times 2654 divided by volts. Amps times 2654 divided by volts. So that's our game plan. Um, to plug these numbers we just measured into the formula. And of course, taking a look at this, again, <clears throat> microfarads equals amps times 2654 divided by volts. So I'm just plugging my readings into this formula. I have 0.65 amps times my constant 2654 divided by the 230 volts that I measured. And if I do the math on this, I come out with um, 7.5 microfarad. And to take a little closer look at this particular capacitor, don't know if you can tell there on the reading but we are looking at a 7.5 microfarad capacitor. Now I could remove that capacitor and I could uh, test it with a, a digital meter. And you're going to find sometimes that when I do the test uh, with my meter and then compare it to the power checking method, you may end up with a power checking method coming up with slightly lower numbers. Remember, you are checking this capacitor under load in the machine. Um, please remember that most capacitors are stamped with a tolerance of plus or minus 5%, plus or minus 6%. Um, if you don't have a stamped tolerance on there, uh, typically I'm looking for 
a field reading within 10% of the microfarad rating, uh, but also keep in mind capacitance can float a little bit with ambient temperature. An older um, Mallory spec that I've heard in the past was those ratings were based on 77 degrees Fahrenheit. And I have seen firsthand where uh, you're checking a capacitor that, you know, from a heat pump and it's outside and, you know, 20, 30 degrees outside and, and uh, these capacitors will read a little bit low in that colder weather. Remember the key point, uh, do you have a smooth motor starting and full load amps on that motor, you know, within uh, an expected range, you know, that you, that you are looking for. Um, if that is the case, chances are your capacitor is good, uh, but in any case, when you are spot checking these capacitors um, during your routine maintenance calls, or if you just end up with uh, a problem with your capacitor tester and need an alternate method out there to prove what you see, remember we're looking at the volts across the capacitor, the amps around one of those wires, and a little bit of math, we can get the job done. Now the only other um, piece of the puzzle here, really two things, First of all, never do this with start capacitors. Um, you have a start relay that takes that start capacitor out of the circuit just within uh, the first second or two of operation. Um, these cannot, well, so you won't have voltage across it and, and, and you won't be able to measure it. And even if you could, um, it might not be safe to, to have that voltage applied on the start capacitor for any kind of long period of time even if you were to hook up a power wire and try to do this really old school so run capacitors only second thing is um, some of the capacitors you see out there are dual capacitors which means we're going to have another terminal and for instance we're now going to have a common a herm and a fan terminal so the way i've got this drawn on the board now for a dual capacitor essentially is checking the fan side. <clears throat> and when I'm checking the fan side of that capacitor, I'm going to measure the voltage between common and fan terminals, and then I'm going to measure the amps of the fan wire. When I want to check the compressor side of that dual capacitor, then I'm going to check the voltage between the common and HERM terminal and check the amps of the HERM or compressor wire. So we're not ever on the dual capacitor we're going to measure the current draw on the common side. We're always going to dedicate that to the fan wire or the compressor wire when we're checking that respective side of the dual capacitors. Um, try this out. Let me know what you think. Hopefully this um, will give you a backup plan or, again, help you check some of those capacitors on the fly during routine maintenance while we're allowing that system to run and, and dry those coils or stabilize that refrigerant circuit. I appreciate you joining us. And, again, if we can help you with anything, check us out at HVACRSkills.com.